So, question is, why do I record myself saying the Via Hafta every day? Okay. Well, let's start with the prayer that comes before the Via Hafta, the Shema. So, the Shema goes, Shema Yisrael Hashem Eloheinu Hashem Echad. Or, if we're being a little bit more orthodox, we would say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Or, if we're being even more orthodox, orthodox to the point of heresy, what's a heresy? I don't know. If we're being orthodox to the point of heresy, we would say, Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. Okay. Six words repeated three times. Each time I repeated them, I changed two of the six words. The first word I used was Hashem, which means the name in Hebrew. The next word I used was Adonai, which means the Lord in Hebrew. And the last word I used is Yahweh, which refers to a polytheistic volcano god that was worshipped in the area surrounding Palestine and Egypt in the 3rd century BC. No, the 1st century BC, about 3,000 years ago, maybe 4,000 years ago, there was a god named Yahweh that was part of a pantheon of gods. His spouse was named Asherah. And this god was worshipped by the ancestors to the Jews let's say 4,000 years ago. Those are the three words. Hashem, the name, Adonai, the Lord, Yahweh, a polytheistic volcano god. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how these three words came to be placed in that prayer. And once I tell you a little bit about that, it will start to make a bit more sense the rest of the prayer, the via hafta part of the prayer. The via hafta part of the prayer is actually quite simple compared to the these six words that make up the Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Eloheinu Hashem Echad. Okay, so what's the first word of the Shema? First word is Shema. It means listen. What's the second word? Second word is Israel. Um, so, we know of Israel as the, the nation of Israel, the nation occupying the Palestinian territories, that one. Um, yeah. So, there's an earlier name for Israel that we'll get to in a moment, but in order to get to that, we actually have to look at the third word in the prayer. The third word is Eloheinu. So, Eloheinu means God in the kind of abstract in the same way that like if you speak to a Hindu they will use the word God to refer to like sort of a rhetorical divinity it's a the, the word God is a word that we use when we are using words to refer to a bunch of things um, so like Shiva is a God and Vishnu is a God uh, and then there's also God in the monotheistic sense that the Hindus have too. Um, sometimes they'll call it Brahman, but uh, they'll also just refer to it as God. Um, so it's it's God without the metaphysical weight. It's it's a noun, like it's just like it's just a it's just a pointer. Like you're, when you say God in 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 this sense, you're not you're not trying to invoke his divinity, its divinity. Um, you're just you're just you're just putting putting a puzzle piece in a sentence so that the sentence can make sense. Yeah. So Eloheinu means God in Hebrew in in that sense, whereas uh, this nameless thing, Hashem, Yahweh, Adonai, that's God in a in a holy sense, in a numinous sense. Eloheinu is not numinous. That's really that's what I'm getting at here. It took me a while. The word numinous means holy. So when a word is charged with numinosity, it becomes sacred. So the word Eloheinu is not nearly as numinous as the word Adonai. But that's okay, because sometimes you need to refer to God in a not numinous way. Turns out most of the time you actually have to refer to God in a not numinous way. So, Eloheinu. You'll notice that 
the word Eloheinu and the word Israel, Israel, have a syllable in common, El. And that's not a coincidence, because El was the name of a creator god for the ancient Canaanites. If you know your Old Testament history, you know that the, the Hebrews left Egypt and they entered the land of Canaan and they conquered the land and took it over. So there were people there before the Israelites came. There were people there. Funny, familiar story. Was there anyone living in Palestine before before the state of Israel came? Maybe. Maybe there was. Um, so there were people there and they worshipped a creator god named El. Um, so that's, you know, languages blend. And so in all of the places in Hebrew where you hear El, you know that it's referring to God in some way. So there are some, you know, famous biblical names, Ishmael, Rachel, Israel. Um, all of those names have to do with this concept of God. So Israel actually means he who struggles with God. And that's referring to a story from the book of Jacob. I guess it's the book of Genesis. I don't know. Story about Jacob in the book of something, book of Abraham. Uh, and the story goes that Jacob was traveling and he laid down one night with his head on a rock. And then the, the Lord Yahweh came down to him in the form of a man. Um, and, or maybe it was an angel. I don't really know if there's a difference between God and an angel. Um, anyway, this divine being comes down in the form of a man and wrestles with Jacob on this rock. And they wrestle for a long time and, and, uh, Jacob gets wounded. And, um, then at the end of this wrestling match, uh, God speaks to him and he says, you have done well. I rename you Israel. Which means he who struggles with God, and then he makes a covenant with Jacob that his his people will be as plentiful as the seeds on the earth. Or maybe he made the covenant with Abraham, and he's reaffirming the covenant with Jacob. I'm I'm all fuzzy on these details, but they don't really matter that much. The point is that Jacob wrestled with God, and he got a new name, Israel, and that is the name of of the entire uh, Jewish tribe, the tribe that struggles with God. You know, that's whoo, that uh. That's uh, some self-fulfilling prophecy right there, yeah, huh? This monotheistic God, he's he's certainly one to be struggled against. He's, yeah. Um, so yeah, back to the Shema, right? Shema Yisrael Hashem Eloheinu Hashem Echad. So, listen, Israel, listen, you who struggles with God. Hashem, the name, Yahweh. I'll get to that in a moment. Our God, that's what Eloheinu means, right? So this this thing, which we have three words for, Hashem, Adonai, Yahweh, um, that thing, our God, whatever that thing is, it's our God, it's Eloheinu, that thing is one. That's the last word, Echad. Echad is one. Yeah. So... Um, Ponder that for a moment. It's an important thing to ponder. What does it mean for God to be one? So I'm going to answer that question. Um, I think it's a good place to stop because it needs it needs some serious thought. So think about that statement. God is one. And, um, and when you're ready, you can click on the next video where I'm going to talk about these three words, Hashem, Adonai, Yahweh, that I've been using interchangeably that exist twice in the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Eloheinu, Hashem, Echad. I'm going to translate those three words a little bit more, and, um, and then we'll talk about the Yahweh.